started. Um, and uh, yeah, then we can just uh, go from there. So um, to kind of start out, I have never done, I've never led a, um, a Zoom webinar. And so I've never really even been to very many. And so I think just for those of us who maybe haven't, or those of us who are experts, there are four like Zoom etiquette rules that I want to uh, just kind of go over. Um, one would be, I think while I'm talking, uh, if you guys could just stay on mute, uh, and that's the little red a microphone with a slash through it at the bottom of your screen. Um, just stay on mute. And then if you have a question, we'll have a question and answer time at the end. But uh, if you have a question, just type it down in the bottom in the in the uh, chat. And I have a coworker, Tina, who's over here and she is monitoring the chat. Um, but yeah, we will have a time for questions at the very end. Um, and then we are recording this uh, this webinar, and so um, you can I can send out the link afterwards where you can rewatch it if you want, or send it to people that instead of trying to give them the whole spiel, you can just say watch this. Um, MCC eventually will have like how to videos um, on YouTube on how to sew these and kind of more about these kits. But um, I'm doing this webinar to kind of get people started while we're waiting for those videos to be made. Um, and so, yeah, this will be recorded. And the fourth little helpful hint is up at the right corner of your Zoom screen, there is like uh, a little square and it says view. You can either put gallery view if you wanna see everyone, or you can put speaker view if you wanna see whoever's speaking, which will be me for a while. Um, and that way, whenever I start to do a demonstration, which I'll, I'll kind of do that towards more the end, um, I will back up so you can see the table a little bit more. But if you put it on speaker view, it will be easier to see uh, what I'm doing. So those are just the four little helpful tools of a Zoom webinar. So, um, all right. Uh, so I also want to start with just kind of saying a little bit about MCC. Um, I don't want to assume that everyone on this call knows what MCC is or even what MCC stands for, right? Um, and so MCC stands for Mennonite Central Committee. And uh, we have been around for 100 years. We had our centennial in 2020. Um, and uh, MCC works in about 51 different countries, um, and we work to share God's love and compassion uh, through relief and development and peace work. And so a lot of where I work is kind of in the relief department. Uh, I am the workroom supervisor, so I have volunteers that come here that put together different kits that uh, we send to our partners um, in, in places after natural disasters, um, places where there are limited resources, uh, places like refugee camps. Um, and that's kind of the relief part of our motto. Uh, but then we also are working with development work and trying to do this in an equal and just way, which is kind of the peace component of that. Um, so yeah, you can find more information on our website if you're more interested in what else MCC does. Um, but yeah, that whenever I see MCC, it's Mennonite Central Committee. And a disclaimer is that you do not have to be Mennonite at all to um, participate in the good work of MCC. Uh, we want this to be an open project that everyone can get involved. It's a really exciting project. So um, yeah, the, uh, so I'm coming to you live from North Newton, Kansas, which is the headquarters of um, MCC Central States. So MCC in the US is broken up to, into four different regions. And so Central States, uh, the headquarters is here in North Newton. And we are sitting on traditional Osage, Ka, Wichita and Comanche land. Um, and I'm originally from Weatherford, Oklahoma. It's about four hours from here. And that is original um, Cheyenne Arapaho land. Uh, and I have worked for MCC for, I'm coming up on my fifth year of uh, working for MCC. And uh, I have learned so much in my time working here. Um, I, I really, yeah, I love the work that we do. It's working with my hands and working to support humanity, right? And that's, those are both two things that I love. And um, I'm hoping that the reason that you signed up for this webinar is because you also love those things or want to hear more about it. So. Um, so now I kind of want to shift into more talking about the Dignity Kits. Uh, like I mentioned, I uh, grew up in Weatherford, Oklahoma. Um, and like whenever we kind of started these Dignity Kits, it was a time that I could reflect on um, 
like my own, I guess, menstruation story, I guess, but, um, you know, starting my period and how those things felt, um, there is like a lot of societal shame that we feel around um, menstruation. And, and it's not even like, I know where that came from. Right. Um, so I, I was talking with my mom cause I got my mom sewing these and I was talking with her and, um, like whenever I was prepubescent and my mom wanted to talk to me about menstruation and, and things like that, I was so embarrassed. My face would get red. I would want to run away anytime my mom and I were alone together because I thought she was going to give me that talk. And I just like, I don't know where, where does this come from? Right. And so um, my mom actually, she like, she couldn't get me in a room alone. So she um, went to the library and she got a stack of books, like about starting your period and, you know, health and puberty. And she put it uh, on the kitchen table. And she told me that I couldn't go to my friend Carly's house until I had read all of those books and learned all about menstruation. <laughs> And um, yeah, so I mean, I, I learned that, but it's, it's like my mom didn't give me that shame and embarrassment. It's just like that time of life where it just feels, you know, like, yeah, it feels embarrassing and it feels like something that you should hide. And, um, and so like, as, as we are thinking about making these kits to be uh, sent to girls and women all over the world, um, think about if there was a, like a, uh, more of a culture of shame around uh, menstruating or think about not being able to have access to pads or tampons or diva cups. Um, I mean, I think that this can be a time of mutual reflection and mutual learning. Uh, as we also think about um, like the young women in our lives and the older women in our lives. Um, yeah, just women and girls. Um, I mean, periods and menstruating is something that connects all of us. It's something that no matter where where you are, um, you know, your, your body goes through these changes and it's something that is a part of humanity. And so this is a way, this is like an act of solidarity, right? This is something that we can do to support um, women and girls. This is something that we can do to reflect on the women and girls in our lives. And um, yeah, women supporting women, men supporting women, uh, people supporting people. Um, these are some of the things that get me excited about, about this kit. Um, also, I also want to touch uh, base on the name of the kit. So the name is called a dignity kit, right? And I think uh, it's important to like make the distinct distinction that we are not like bringing dignity to the recipients of these kits. We are supporting the dignity that they already have. Um, and yeah, if you think, you know, if you put yourself in the position of someone who um, doesn't have access to pads or in a lot of places where um, we are going to be sending these kits, um, they either aren't able to purchase them or they're expensive. And so like families would rather use money to send their kids to school than buy, um, you know, pads or menstruation products. And so a lot of these girls are skipping their week that they're menstruating. They're staying at home um, and, and, you know, using whatever they can, um, but, but because they don't have, um, pads or whatever they need to be able to go to school and not bleed on things. Um, and, uh, and so, yeah, just, just uh, kind of reflect on those things. And also thinking about how we um, deal with our periods here in the U.S. and how there's so, there's so much waste and, and so much, uh, you know, yeah, we aren't being kind to our mother earth, um, you know, by throwing away uh, you know, pads and tampons and stuff like that. And so that's also another point of reflection is uh, what can we learn from um, this, these recyclable and reusable pads that we're wanting to send to our sisters across uh, all over? Uh, what can we learn from that and reflect on our own practices around uh, shame, around periods, around um, all sorts of those things. So I just, yeah, I just wanted to put those little things in your mind. So this can be kind of a mutual um, learning thing instead of like us just, you know, making these pads to send to, uh, yeah, to women and girls. This is an act of solidarity. So um, I, I do want to talk a little bit about the history of these dignity kits. So um, we have been talking, and by we, I, uh, it's kind of been the material resource 
uh, network. So it's people who have my job in the US and Canada. Um, we get together and we talk about the different kits that MCC has. And we ask our partners, you know, are these kits meeting the needs? Are they culturally appropriate? Are there items that are needed, aren't needed? Things like that. We are a partner-based organization. So we want to be um, doing and, and sending things that are um, what the partner needs, not what we think that they need, right? And so in one of our kits, the relief kit you may be familiar with, it's in a five gallon bucket. We put towels and soap and toothbrushes and a lot of those are going to um, like places after natural disaster and um, refugee camps. But inside of that kit, we put um, 28 maxi pads. And that just really got us thinking, right? Like how long can those actually last? Um, and also, I mean, women's health is everyone's health, right? So growing up, my uh, mom used to say, you know, if mama ain't happy, ain't nobody happy. Um, and I just, I mean, women are, you know, the heart of a lot of things and a lot of culture and a lot of you know, family life. And it's like, yeah, women's health is everyone's health. And so we really were talking, how can we support um, women's health in a way that is sustainable, in a way that is culturally appropriate, and uh, in a way that we can, we can, um, yeah, help with our gifts that we have. So um, we, like the material resource groups, we checked with uh, some other nonprofits to, who are doing this kind of work. You may have heard of an organization called Days for Girls, which is a really good organization as well. And they, they kind of focus on, on um, reusable menstruation pads. So we checked with a couple different places to kind of see how they're doing it. Um, we, we looked at a lot of different patterns for uh, the reusable, pa uh, reusable pads. Um, and we actually, the women of the material resources group, we actually wore these and used them um, and like took notes and we changed our pattern based off of how they felt on our bodies because we want to be sending a product that we believe in and that we would use and that is a gift, right? We don't, we want to be sending our best, not just um, things that we think will make do. And so, yeah, so these kits, um, yeah, we started working on them in 2018. It's taken a while. We've, we've talked to our partners who are really excited about them. And a lot of the things that we are putting inside of these kits are based off of partner feedback, what, they, what our partnering organizations said that they would like in these kits. So right now we have requests for these dignity kits from uh, our partners in Burkina Faso at, a, at schools in Burkina Faso and Malawi and Ukraine. And then we also have requests from a women's prison in Zambia. And um, so these are, these are places that um, these kits will be going and, and we have lots of requests for them. Um, and so, yeah, I'll kind of talk about the quantity of requests that we have, but um, here in a little bit, but I just kind of want to talk about what all goes inside the kit. Um, also, this is on our website. What I'm about to go over is on our website. And so you can, uh, you can see, find that information on our website as well. Um, yeah, okay. So let me introduce the, the reusable pad system a little bit. Um, so this right here, this is the base unit. You can see right here. Put me on speaker view if you need. Um, this is called the base unit. And this um, is the the part that snaps onto the underwear that then holds the pads. So um, you can see here, like this one has pads in it like this. So um, this is made up of a piece of flannel here on the front, elastic right here. And I'll go over the details of all of the, the parts, but flannel. And then on this side, this is something called PUL. If you are familiar with like, washable or reusable diapers. It's kind of like that. It's polyurethane laminate fabric. And so um, it is like on one side, it's really shiny. And on one side, it's kind of dull. And so the shiny side goes on the inside, which is like a waterproof barrier. So this base unit is snapped onto the underwear like this. That's the snap on the bottom side. So it goes on the underwear like this. Can I get some head nods to know that you understand it? Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> um, so this goes on the underwear. And then these are just, they're fleece pads that will go 
in here in the elastic. So uh, each girl will get four of these single fleece pads like this that she can uh, double up as much as she needs. And then she'll get four of these tri-folds. So these are bigger and then you can just fold them like this. So then it's like, it's like three layers. Does that make sense? So, so each kit will have three of the base units and then four of the single, flan, uh, the single uh, fleece pads and then four of the, of the trifold pads. And these can be washed um, pretty easily. So um, fleece, yeah, it, it's very absorbent and also it dries really easily. It's, I mean, if you've ever had a, a fleece item, you know, if you wring it out, it dries pretty quickly. And so that's, yeah, that's why we went with fleece. It also can, I mean, these pads can last for up to two years if they're taken care of well. We're hoping that, um, like our partnering organizations that use the, a very similar pattern say that these base units can last like four to six years if they're taken care of well. Um, and we, I mean, we haven't had our partners use them for four to six years yet. So we can't say that that's a fact, but um, whenever these are distributed, they also go with a little card that talks about how to use them, but they also are going with um, like a class, like, edu like an education seminar that talks about I mean, what, what's happening in your body and, and you know, what menstruation actually is, but it also talks about how to take care of these to make them last as long as possible. Um, and I also like, it, I think it's helpful to remember that like, we aren't the only resor resources that these women have, right? So women are clever. And so like, if this breaks, it's not like, oh no, I mean, it is, but it's not like, you know, like these women know how to sew, you know, it's like, uh, yeah. So, um, so hope, yeah, hopefully these can last as long as possible, but we have made them the best quality that we can on our end so that they can last as long as possible um, on the receiving end. So ideally the girl, whenever she starts her period or whatever, she'll put this in her underwear, she'll load up her pads, however many she thinks she needs for the day. She'll be able to go to school, um, and then once, if, if these are soiled at school, she's able to, you know, pack more in her bag um, and, and change them out during the day. But we are sending a Ziploc bag for now that she can put the soiled ones in. And, um, but we are also working on, the design isn't finalized for this, but we're also working on a transport bag that would be like a Ziploc bag, but uh, made out of the PUL fabric too. So she could put her um, the used ones in here as well. So we are still working on a finalized pattern for that, but for right, for night, for right now, we'll be sending a Ziploc bag that the soiled ones can go in. And um, I bet a lot of you are familiar with this. This is a kit bag. And so like a school kit, it's the same bag that we use for school kits and for hygiene kits. Um, and so we are sending one of these as well. So hopefully this whole pad system can go in here. It's, it's a cute, I love this one. Uh, it's a cute, fun bag. Um, and so, yeah, hopefully it's something that doesn't feel shameful, but it feels like exciting and, and pretty. That's, that's also something that's, it's been fun to work with like fun, bright fabrics, you know, um, to try to think about uh, like celebrating our bodies and, and um, yeah, leaning into this time of the month instead of trying to hide it. Uh, so anyways, this, uh, this bag is where um, the girls can transport their kit system or their soiled ones or whatever inside of this bag uh, while they're at school or while they're at work, whatever they need to do. So inside of the kit is um, in review, three base units, four pads, four trifold pads, a kit bag, and then we're also sending three pairs of underwear. Um, and so we are buying them in small, medium, and large. And then um, the different partners that are requesting these can request, you know, if they have an idea of what sizes that they need, they can say like, you know, 
if if it yeah if there may be older women or, or mature women they can say like we need medium and large or small you know whatever but we will have different sizes available small medium and large um to send the underwear the only thing that is sized differently is the underwear um the pads are the same size so and we did yeah we did toy with having different sizes of the base units because there were different sizes of bodies of the women that tried them and uh we this medium size here worked for for all the types of bodies that we tried them here. Um, and so, yeah, that, that also is good because it's nice to just have one pattern. So three pairs of underwear. Uh, we also put in a fingernail clipper, a comb here, a wide tooth comb, two bars of body soap here, one large bar of uh, laundry soap. Uh, so I should also say the thing that I don't have here to show you all, but I think is cute and exciting is that these things go in a little two gallon pail. So if you are familiar with like our relief kits, they go in five gallon pails, but these go in these little white pails, all of these items do. Um, and so then the women and girls can wash them in that pail. Um, and then also the things that I don't have today is clothespins. It comes with, um, I think it's two or four, four clothespins that then they can hang them out to dry. Um, and this is all on our website, but yeah, this is laundry soap. Um, yeah, we have Zote and Felsnaphtha. That's kind of what we have in the US as far as um, finding laundry soap. Uh, we'll also put in a washcloth here, a hand towel here, and then four, I don't know if you can see, four heavy duty safety pins. And uh, I, yeah, if anybody has like lived life, you know that you always could use a safety pin. That's kind of how we came, that's kind of how we came upon that. And our partner said that they would be really excited about that. Um, I mean, if you need to adjust your dress or if you need to, uh, you know, if you get a hole in your bag or whatever. Um, so yeah, so four safety pins also go in the kit. Um, and so, yeah, all of those items will go in uh, a pail and then um, be sent to our partners. So the order that we are working on right now is, um, is to Burkina Faso for the girls' school in Burkina Faso. Um, and they have requested 2,500 kits. Yeah, I see a mouth open. Yeah, it's a lot because I didn't do the math beforehand, <laughs> but whatever 2,500 times three is how many base units we need. So I know everyone is super good at mental math. So do, do that mental math. Um, and this is just for, uh, they have requested as kind of it, not an emergency situation, but they said that th these are like something that they absolutely need. And so they have requested that we send out a container with these in July. So our region here in central states, we're trying to get as many as possible um, we told our partners that we don't know, because this is a new kit, we told them that we don't know if we'll be able to meet that goal, but we will get as close as, the, to, as, close to it as we can. Um, but we are definitely going for like qua quality over quantity. I mean, we, we want to help as many women and girls as possible, but if the product isn't made right or isn't made well, it's not worth the whole journey that it's going to take, right? Um, and so that's, yeah. So that leads me into the next part of my uh, little webinar, which is the demonstration on how to sew them. So it's it's actually it's pretty it's pretty simple, especially if you have a sewing background. My sewing background is sewing comforters. That's what I um, love, and and the seam allowance is pretty much the same, but there's just a few curves. But if you can sew. Um, a comforter, if you can sew anything, even if you can't, you can learn on this. Um, you can sew a base unit. So I'll kind of go over that. I'm going to scoot my table back so you can see my workspace here. There you go. Can you see it okay? Okay. All right. I took, I took a bunch of these things home over Easter so my mom and I could sew them together. And um, yeah, I think we, we got like 20 done over Easter weekend, um, but the more you do it, the easier it becomes. I'll just say that. 
So the first thing, and I have these instructions that after you graduate from my Zoom class right now, <laughs> I can email them to you. Um, we really want, instead of putting the instructions and the pattern online, we are really wanting to like have a conversation and touch base with the sewers and sew us to um, make sure that they know what type of things to buy, what kind of quality we're looking for, things like that. So that's why the pattern and the instructions aren't online yet. They will be eventually whenever we put a YouTube video up of how to sew them. But um, right now, yeah, it, I'm glad that you all showed up because uh, then you can also spread the word about what to buy, how to sew, who to contact with questions. So uh, yeah, you all will be graduating um, with, okay, anyways. Um, okay, so the things that you need are, flannel we're using like a flannelette like uh like from joann's you can kind of buy it on rolls there and you can use your coupons um but we ask that you pre-wash all of the flannel that way it shrinks here and it doesn't shrink whenever it gets to the recipient um so yeah all of all of this is washed flannel we also are trying to stay away from like very very light colored flannels um, we're hoping that this part doesn't get soiled, but you know, sometimes that happens uh, and they will be able to wash them. I, on the one that I used, uh, I was able to wash stains out of here, but still we try to, we're trying to use like busier kind of darker flannel. Um, then the, the next thing that you need is PUL, that polyurethane laminate that I talked about. Uh, and this is already cut out. But this part, it kind of it kind of stumped me. So this is why I want to tell you about it. So there is like a plasticky side. You see how there's a shiny side there? You see how that's shining? <laughs> and then there's a dull side here. So on the instructions, it calls, it says that you put the dull side um, and the right side of the flannel together. So pretty much no, just know this in your head that the shiny part is the water barrier. And so you want that enclosed inside of the base unit. Does that make sense? Have some head shakes? Okay, yeah. Because uh, if there's any leakage, you want the shiny side to stop it before it gets to the underwear. So I, I the very first one I did, I did it wrong, but I learned from my mistakes. So um, yeah, just, and, and it says it on the directions clearly, but just, no, yeah, just know the science of it. So uh, the first, um, thing that you'll do, you'll wash your flannel, you'll cut these things out. Um, I, we actually have like a die cut machine here that pre-cuts a lot of these. And so um, if, if you all want to start sewing these, I, I'm going to have a starter kit that I'll mail to you with some pre-cuts um, so you can kind of get started. But yeah, see, I have stacks on stacks on stacks of um, them cut out. But once, yeah, once you go through your um, starter kit, it would be great if you could uh, buy and purchase and cut out your own. Um, and so, you know, it works well to cut it out, just tracing it onto the back of the flannel, cutting it out. Um, I had my coworker, Duane, make, make a pattern of this out of um, plexiglass. Uh, and so then we can just put that down and trace around it, which has been helpful, but we've mostly been using the die cup machine. Anyways, okay. So the supplies that you need, flannel, PUL, two pieces of elastic, approximately four inches each. And the elastic, um, we prefer, it doesn't, it says on the instructions, white or black is okay. But um, I really think the black, the, if, you, if you have a choice while you're purchasing, the black elastic, I think it's better because it won't show the soiledness um, as much. And so, yeah, so two pieces of, of the um, elastic and we're looking for three eighths to an inch wide. Um, and then uh, the only other thing is that you need are snaps. And we actually have a cool snap applicator. Maybe you all know about this. Um, we have a cool snap applicator here at the MCC center. And so I'm telling a lot of my sewers if you just wanna sew the base units, send them to me and I'll, like we can put on the snaps here because this is so much easier than snowing on sewing on snaps. Um, or if you like want to be your own machine, which would be awesome, you can also buy one of these. Just email me and I can send you what I bought or some suggestions. Um, 
but yeah, putting on the, the snaps has been, has been fun because there's lots of different colors of snaps that you can choose from. So, okay. So then, I mean, this will be a pretty simple little tutorial. Um, you'll place the right side of the flannel and the textured side of the PUL, which is the not shiny side. Um, you'll put them together and you'll put your, uh, you'll put your elastic on the inside about two inches down like that inside. So I have a second one, so I'll show you like this. So you see the elastic there about two inches down, elastic there. And so it's like a little enclosed thing. Um, it says on the instructions to use pins sparingly because we don't wanna put holes in this plastic fabric. The, you can use it on like the seam allowance right there, but my volunteer found some of these like sewing clips for me. Can you see them? They are magical um, where you can just clip them. And so if you, if you can find any of those, like at your sewing shop online, um, they really, they make such a difference. So that's, yeah, I'm able to just clip that in there. So then once you have your little sandwich made, you will sew around it using a fourth of an inch seam allowance all the way around, leaving one end of it open because we're gonna pillowcase this, right? We're gonna turn it inside out. So you sew all the way around it which comes to my next example. So I wish I would have used darker thread, but I mean, so you could see, but I sewed a fourth of an inch all the way around. And so when my mom and I made these, we got to this point and then we went out into the living room and we watched a movie while we turned these inside out. So you can make, yeah, you can, this is a fun part because it's a little mindless, right? So then what we do is we turn it inside out like this, and it says in the instruction, you can use like a chopstick or something to poke out the corners. Um, I guess something else I should say is it's helpful if you want to trim the corners once you've sewn them, just so that they, so you can poke it out a little further. Um, yeah, just trim the corners. There, okay. So turn it inside out. And whenever you turn it inside out, the, the elastic should be on the uh, flannel side. That's something else that sometimes takes a little bit of thinking about. But um, so you turn this inside out, you put the elastic on the flannel side. And then I feel like, I feel like you all, yeah, it's like making little masks. I feel like you can guess what the next step is, right? So the next step is then you're gonna take the top where you, where you left it open and you're gonna fold it under about a fourth of an inch. And then if you have little clippers, you know, you can, you can clip it. And then you're just gonna top stitch all the way around there. Uh, I had a sewer who used like a zigzag and I thought it looked really nice. It says, it doesn't say in the instructions that you need to do that, but um, a zigzag or whatever, but just a, a nice top stitch there around the top. And then you, and make, make sure that your elastic is on the, on the top of the flannel. Um, but yeah, then you have your base unit and then you can add the snaps if you want on the pattern. It kind of shows where to put them, but it's just, I mean, just there at the bottom so that it can be snapped onto the gusset of, of the underwear. Um, and yeah, then you have your base unit and then you have to do it two more times to finish a kit. So uh, yeah, so it, it takes a lot, but I mean, they, yeah, I'm sure the past year of sewing masks has like amped everyone up for this. That, yeah, you are prepared for this um, to be able to sew these. I also wanna say the PUL fabric comes in lots of really fun colors and it even comes in some designs. That's totally fine. Yeah, it's, um, at first I just bought white PUL from uh, Joann's, but the, yeah, they have really fun different colors. And then it's, it's kind of fun to pair them with the top. Um, so yeah, I think that insert snaps in the flap area, avoiding the thickness of the seam allowance. So it has the dots on the, um, on the instructions. So that was my short little sewing demonstration. Um, but yeah, 
so so the next steps i'm gonna have some time for questions but i do want to say the next steps um if you all want to join in the fun and start sewing uh, I emailed you the link that was me, Kate, um, so that you would have my email address. So if you want to get started on this, email me and I can send you in all of this information that I was talking about. I can even send you um, uh, a, a, like, sorry, I can send you the link to this um, so that you can review it. And uh, yeah, the instructions won't be online for a little bit. Um, the instructions will be online whenever they have the YouTube video instruction, um, which I think that might be in, a little bit until the fall. I think it might be a little bit still. So you can use this or you can, you know, physically show if you want friends to get involved or whatever. Um, but I'll send you, yeah. And so also send me your address if you want me to send you a starter kit, which would be the instructions, the pattern, and then uh, 10, uh, an example one, and then 10 pre-cuts of the PUL and the flannel. So you can kind of get started. Um, if you are in the central states region, uh, which is, yeah, like, six, yeah, if you aren't sure what your region is, we can talk about it over email. Um, but eventually your kits will need to be sent to MCC in North Newton. Um, and ideally, if that could be, yeah, if you could send me what you have by like June, you know, so that I could then get them to MCC headquarters in uh, July so that we could get as many as possible for that first Burkina Faso um, shipment, that would be great. But like I said, I want to stress qua quality over quantity um, because yeah, we yeah we will eventually fulfill the request, but we want to make sure that we're doing it uh, not fast and crazy. So, um, okay, what if you have any questions, type them in the chat and my friend Tina will, um, there's a question, okay. There's a question about cotton flannel. Do you prefer cotton flannel or poly? Oh, okay. Um, I think I have purchased cotton flannel. Um, I think it's like the flannel. It's like the flannel at, at Joann's. Um, I think that that. I think that that is cotton. I guess I'm not 100% sure, but yeah, it, it it feels like cotton. Yeah, I think it's cotton. Uh, so the curves don't need to be clipped. You, yeah, you can clip the curves. Um, it actually, it, it does make it easier, but it, it's less of a curve and it's more like a corner, like a, yeah, a corner. Um, but yeah, you can clip those so that whenever you turn it inside out, they're a little bit more flexible. Oh, Sarah Fleming, who works for MCC Central States, um, she said that if you get your uh, base units to the local MCC thrift shop, she will facilitate getting them to the office. So if you live near an MCC thrift shop, uh, take them there. And apparently Sarah will help find a way to get them here to North Newton, uh, which is awesome. Something else that I want to say that we need help with is we also need help cutting fleece pads. Um, so I will send out the dimensions for them. The big one, uh, the large liner, the trifold is nine and three fourths by nine and three fourths. The reason why it's three fourths is so that we can get um, four complete sets of liner from a square yard. Um, but that's what this is. And then these here are three inches by nine and three fourths. We also, we're pre-washing all of our fleece um, and so, yeah, but, but they, they don't need to be finished around the edges. They don't fray or anything like that. But if you don't want to sew, or if you have like people in your life that don't want to sew, but they want to cut, these actually take a really long time for me to cut out. Uh, so we would love if you wanted to get your fleece cutting on. Okay. Um, there's a question about the cam snap system, or do you have a non name brand? I, yeah, I don't think I have, I don't think it is. I think it's off brand. I think it's off brand. Um, Oh my goodness, no, it's not. It's a cam system. Great job, Linda, I had no idea. Um, yeah, I got this off of Amazon um, and it's it it presses the snaps on there and it has so many fun colors of snaps. I mean, this is only half of them, but it's been really fun to pair that with um, the different the different uh, designs of the fabric. And PUL is readily available. Joanne's? Yeah, PUL is available at Joanne's. You can get the um, plain white, or I don't think I have an example. They also they have cute chevron stuff. Um, I have been buying my 
P-U-L in bulk from a, from a place called Wazoodle, W-A-Z-O-O-D-L-E, wazoodle.com. And they have really great solid colors. Like they have this magenta, which I love. They have um, blue, they have chartreuse, they have all sorts of, but that, that's like if you're buying a lot, I've been buying a lot from there. Um, but yeah, if you're just wanting to get started, um, check out at Joanne's. What if we live in Pennsylvania? Oh yeah. If you live in Pennsylvania, um, Laura, just connect with me afterwards and I will tell you where you need to send them. There's actually a place closer to you, uh, in effort of Pennsylvania where you can either, I don't know where you live, but you can either drop them by or you can, yeah, you can get them to, um, the resource center there in effort of Pennsylvania. Um, Carrie's wondering how many can be cut per yard, and I'm not sure exactly which piece she got. Yeah, okay, yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm assuming you're asking how many of these uh, base units can we cut per yard. I actually don't know that answer. We have been using our die cut machine, which I think has more waste. I know it has more waste. Um, and so whenever I went home for Easter and took home just flannel and my mom and I just traced it out on there, uh, we were able to get a lot more out of it. Um, it, was, it wasn't as fast, but I, I don't know, I don't know how, much, how many you can get out of a yard. But I will repeat the, um, for the fleece, you can get four complete sets of liners from one square yard of fleece. Um, but yeah, as far, yeah, that would be a good thing for me to know, but I don't know that answer. Um, any more questions? Okay. I'm so excited that you all joined. I had no idea if anybody would, uh, would join a little webinar, but I'm so excited to be able to um, talk about this kit and uh, connect with you all and um, yeah, dream about how we can uh, make these out of solidarity. So yeah, thank you so much for your time. You all have my email address. If you don't, it's Kate Mast at mcc.org, K-A-T-E-M-A-S-T at mcc.org. And just email me and we can follow up with what you want to do. I also should say, if you saw this and you were like, I don't want to sew, I don't want to cut, you can also give money to this project. So uh, you can go online and designate your gift for dignity kits, or you can... Um, send a check to MCC Central States and just designate it for dignity kits in the in the bottom. Um, right now, we are really focusing on the sewing part of it. As we go along, we will really want you all to collect these items, right? And, and put them in, in um, buckets and all those things. But right now, what we are really working towards is getting people competent, which I know you all are now that you graduate um, from this little class, but competent and, and comfortable sewing these base units and telling your friends about them. Um, well, so, watch, yeah. They can get the pattern by email. Yes, if you watch, you can get the pattern by emailing me. And um, yeah, and if you have friends that are interested in it, if you feel comfortable, if you feel like you can uh, relay what I have relayed today <laughs> to your friends and family in a way that you feel good about them sticking with this pattern, I should also say we are sharing this pattern patent with another nonprofit. And so um, these, these can't be like made to sell or anything like that. Um, but we want everyone to... Um, we want everyone to stick to this pattern. But anyways, you can share it. You can share it. You guys have become ambassadors for this. So you can share it, but uh, email me afterwards and I can send you the pattern and the instructions. And we would love for you to get started. Quarter inch elastic to be used. Quarter inch, I think that's okay. Yeah, do you have some leftover from mask making? I feel like a lot of people have that leftover from mask making. Yeah, that should be okay, I believe. I'll let you know if it's not, but I think that that should be okay who asked that, okay. Okay, any other questions? Okay, congratulations on your graduation. Um, yay. Uh, yeah, thank you so much for joining in and connect with me over email and I'll get you hooked up. Um, so thank you so much. Have a good evening, everyone. Thanks, Kate.